Okay, Mitzi. Hi, everyone. I'm Bonita, one half of the Ghost Gals group Paranormal Revolution. And I am here to teach Mitzi the dog about vampires and sirens. In our last live stream episode, <laughs> what do you see, a vampire out there? I think it's just a lizard. In our last live stream episode, here, Mitzi, Tim and I talked about the vampires of Santorini. Santorini is an old volcanic um, island in the Mediterranean off the coast of southern Greece, and it is also the origin of Atlantis, and it is responsible for the greatest volcanic eruption in recorded history of our planet. So in the episode, um, and I, I believe I put a little box for it up here if you want to take a look at that, um, Kim mentioned that one of the reasons that people talked about um, vampires on Santorini is because when the volcano erupted, it took away like at least three quarters of the island got blown to bits. And the rest of the island kind of crumpled in and sunk down because, you know, a volcano before it erupts is full of hot lava, molten lava, magma, gases, so it's more buoyant. And once it erupts, there's nothing left and it collapses in on itself. This is a very interesting phenomenon. If you want to learn more, look up volcanic eruptions before and after you'll, you know, or volcanoes that sink in on themselves, especially as the lava cools, it becomes a dense core of rock and rock is heavy. That causes a further collapse into the ocean. So <laughs> we all know where that story is going. So when the volcano erupted, it left a lot of caves, like where the lava is flowing through because it doesn't come out of just one place. It comes out of a lot of tubes and tunnels. Where the lava stops flowing, you end up with all these uh, um, volcanic caves. <laughs> and one thing you have in the ocean is water going in and out, making noise when it goes into caves, like a, a moaning sound as the water gets pulled, sucked in, and washed out. And also you get um, the wind howling, woo, hence the origin of the vampires. There was this sound, this haunting sound, plus where you have caves, you get bats. So you have woo, kind of noise and bats flying around. Now, were there really vampires there? I don't know. But I do know this information I just shared with you for people who are trying to figure out what is going on and they don't have modern science uh, can then claim volcanoes, I mean vampires. It's a very similar situation to the sirens of ancient Greece. You know, these birds that had the heads of women that were hideous and they ate the flesh and bones off the men that were shipwrecked on their islands. They would lure them to their islands with their beautiful voices and then the ships would crash on these hidden rocks and then the sirens would come and eat the flesh off the bones cackling to themselves. Interesting story behind that. You know, Homer of Ulysses, um, I mean, Ulysses of Homer and his adventures, he had his man plug their ears with wax while they lashed him to the, the pole, the mast pole, so that he could hear the songs. And no matter how mad he went with lust for the sirens, the, the sailors couldn't hear anything. And they didn't remove the wax till they were like safely away from the noise. And then he described it to them. So uh, Ulysses is the only sailor in the history of the world who heard the siren's call and lived to tell about it. Um, the truth of this, when I lived in Greece, 
one thing I learned is, uh, you know, they have their rainy season and their dry season, but all year long, you need to drink water. And the wells can run dry in the dry season, so they dig up cisterns. So imagine a hole in the ground that's sort of uh, oblong shaped, like a, a honey, you know, like a beehive kind of shape. And at the top, there is an opening with a funnel all around it. So when it rains, it doesn't just rain into the hole, it rains all along the broad funnel around that sends the rainwater into the hole. And it's not just a straight well like we're used to seeing. It goes wider and wider and wider and wider the deeper it goes. And the reason for this is then they enclose it with tiles, ceramic, clay, anything that is non-porous that will keep the rainwater in place. So you have these in like every old town in Greece and on the islands where there's not as much fresh groundwater because you're surrounded by, you know, the Aegean Sea, they have even more. If you wish to have a town on an island, you need enough cisterns to support enough water retention to support people living on the island without, you know, dying. So there are some islands around uh, Caprea, Caprea, where they have a lot of cisterns because there's no natural water um, or not much. <laughs> and the, these islands are like, there's only one area that you can go safely in and out of the islands. Otherwise, it's just like cliffs, crags, rocks, you crash. The, you have to go, there's the ocean side that all the boats, the ships go on that just crashes you in. And then there is the, what do you call it? The leeward side or whatever, the side where it's more gentle, which the ships don't go on because, you know, uh, then they don't have any wind to blow their sails. So the people who live on the island go into the gentle area, but all the sailors, all they ever see are the cliffs and the rocks. So here's the thing. You know how, like, when you're in the shower and you're singing, you're like, dang, my voice is good. I could be a professional singer. And then you get out of the shower and you sing, you're like, yeah, no, I'm not going to quit my day job. It's the same with cisterns. When you go into a cistern and you sing, like you get lowered down by a little, sw you know, swing chair, it is so beautiful. And pretty much every village in Greece, historically, would have like certain ceremonies or, you know, like before Easter, before Christmas, because now they're very, you know, Catholic over there. But before then, it would be like before the harvest, before this or that, where they have like a period of time, maybe 24 hours where people take turns being lowered in to sing. And um, I've done this. You will never sound so magically, lyrically beautiful as when you sing from inside the gorgeous water-bottomed echo chamber of a ceramic tiled cistern. And the sound comes out of the hole magnified by the basin. The whole village can hear you sing. Oh my word, it is truly an epiphany experience. It's just magical, it's truly amazing. So on these islands where you know, you don't have to do that much to survive because you don't have a lot of growing because there's not a lot of water. They do a little fishing, a little, you know, repairing huts. There's not that much happening. So your choice is like sitting around watching the waves go in and out or doing something fun. On these islands, they had people in the cisterns like 24-7. Everyone took turns and they would have people in the cistern singing. I mean, I was told 24-7, I don't know, maybe people said we need a break from music. I don't know what. But there were people in the cisterns singing. And they would sing beautiful songs in harmony. They would compose songs and make it, okay, everyone, this is like how, how they define themselves as a community. And when you were on a ship going by, and you hear the gorgeous harmony of maybe three or eight cisterns of people singing. 
a beautiful song together. It's going to be, you know, especially for ancient Greeks who they hear some, they're like, what is it? So what do they see up in the sky? They see great birds in the sky. There's predator birds and vultures. A lot of vultures there because as I said, a lot of things crash, a lot of things crash there. And what do vultures do? They're scavenger birds. If any fish hit there and they die, if any ships hit there and they die, the vultures want to be there. So you have a lot of vultures. And what do vultures look like? Giant birds with bare heads, no feathers on their heads. So they see the vultures, they hear the singing, and hence the sirens are born. Now, are there real sirens? You know, maybe there were, and maybe that's why they were then determined to be here. Well, we can research that another day. But Mitzi and I wanted to share <laughs> this little tidbit with you because having a 3D explanation for something does not counter the metaphysical, spiritual, supernatural side of things. I have been to exorcisms. I have seen demons. I have seen otherworldly beings. There's room for all of this to exist together. And the more we learn about everything, the more we can see where things seem together and where both exist in tandem and harmony. Well, I look forward to continuing our explorations with you, continuing our explorations with you and Mitzi, and Kim, my other ghosty gal pal. Have a wonderful day. Bye.